next Saturday, I'm going to be giving away a walnut and blue opal ring. All you're going to have to do is comment on next week's video. And there'll be more information there. In this video, we're going to make a ventwood ring out of this quarter sawn walnut. And we're going to put it on a core of three quarter inch copper tubing. And then we're also going to take this 20 gauge copper wire and do a nice inlay with it. And for fastening and stabilizing, we're going to use this CA. And we're going to finish it off with a clear coat of Aluma UV. We're going to start by cutting a centimeter wide strip of our quarter sawn walnut. A good trick is to taper one side of the wood before you roll it. That way when it dries, you won't end up with any bad kinks in your roll. Now I'm going to dip the wood in some nearly boiling water to soften it up so that we can shape it. With the wood wet, we're going to wrap it around a socket. I like to use the X-Acto knife to hold down the tapered edge just so I can get the roll started off easy. And then we're going to roll it up as tight as we can and then roll it a few times on the table. And once we do that, we'll tape it with some masking tape. I'm going to dry this for an hour or two and then we're going to get to work on our copper ring core. This ring is going to be 6 millimeter wide and I'm going to mark it at 6 but I'm going to cut it a little bigger just because I can always take more off. Uh, we're going to use this pipe cutter to wind off this piece for our core and then we can get to work shaping it and sizing it. Before we can size this, we need to knock these hard edges off, uh, but before I do that, I'm going to do a little light annealing just to increase the cold workability of the ring. And now I can easily knock off those rough edges and we can size up this band. This core is an 11 right now and we needed to make it a 12. So we're gonna put it on the ring structure. Uh, an easy way to expand the ring is just to torque it three times and slowly rotate between each and then flip it over and do the same thing. And it'll give you about a quarter of a size each time, but as you get closer to the size you're going for, you're gonna you're gonna torque a little less just to be more gentle. So I went all the way to 12 and a quarter because we're going to completely encapsulate the ring. So that's going to add about a quarter size. So I made it a little bit larger. The band is sized, but now we need to shape the face because we have a little concave. So what we're going to do is just take it over to the disc on the belt sander and uh, slowly grind down the face and get it flat. The face of the copper is flushed up pretty good now, but I still want to clean all that oxidation off before I put the wood on, so I'm just going to use a steel bristle brush to clean it off really well. The quarter sawn walnut is all dry, so now we can put our copper core inside of it and glue it up so we can get to work on our ring blank. Uh, what we're going to do is just put it inside of there and then roll it a few times to get a nice tight wind. And then we're gonna use the thick CA to hold the wood in place and then we're gonna tape it and use the thin CA to stabilize the band.
After about an hour, the glue should be dry so you can pull the tape off and have a look at the finished blank. Like I mentioned before, we're going for a 6mm width on this band. So what we're going to do is go over to the belt sander and keep grinding it down until we uh, get pretty close to that width. So now that I have the right width, I can turn it on the lathe. Uh, for fine woodworking like this, I usually like to go with a skew to shape, and then any sanding I do will be mostly with 220 grit. After I shape a band, I like to add a thin layer of CA before doing any kind of an inlay, especially with a wire inlay because you have to really take your time on depth and width and having a harder surface just makes it a little bit more particular when you're grinding. So the inlay is the right depth and we're ready to put the wire in. It's 20 gauge wire so it's pretty heavy. Giving it a little pre-roll and adding a curve to it before you try to place it in the inlay will make the whole job a lot easier. I'm going to use a couple of drops of CA to attach the wire and we're going to work our way all the way around the band. Once we get there we're going to snip off the excess and then file it down until it fits snugly in there. Because copper is so soft, you can use a lot of different tools to flush the face of it. I just like to start with a file and then finish with sandpaper, but you know, you could use a Dremel tool, you could use a grinder, uh, you could even use a tungsten bit. But if you pull this inlay out, it's a real headache to try to put it back in.
So now the face is totally sanded and polished and we're ready to clear coat it. Now we can break out the Illumi UV and clear coat the band. Uh, we can lay on a really thick coat here because Illumi UV is so viscous that it self levels and in the UV bath it'll still cure up very quickly. Now it'll go 5 to 10 minutes in the UV bath and it'll be totally cured up. Aluma UV is rated an 80 of surety hardness, so it's got the same strength as a construction hard hat. And the more I use it, the more I realize it's going to go on all of my bands. So I've taken the band off the mandrel and wrapped it in some masking tape. Uh, now we can turn it on the lathe and sand the inside. And once we get it all sanded up and polished, we can do a full dip in the Aluma UV so the whole band will be clear coated. So the band is totally shaped and I cleaned it with a little bit of denatured alcohol to remove any dust. And now I'm going to use some Aluba UV and a black light to attach nylon to the band. And then once we do this, we can dip it in the uh, bottle of Aluba UV. So here I'm using a q-tip to remove the excess resin, but the more I tinkered around with this method, I found it a lot easier just to use a heat gun and you can thin the resin out so that it just beads off and levels out even better. So after about 30 minutes in the UV bath, we snapped off that piece of nylon and it left a little node on the outside of the band. So I'm doing a rough sand here on the disc and then I'm gonna go back with some, uh, some softer sandpapers and really finish it off. And then we're gonna to go to the buffing wheel and uh, shine it up. I feel with this band that less is more. You know, the dark wood mixed with the copper looks great. And the full clear coat will stop you from getting any kind of 
you know, green marking on your finger from that copper. Thanks so much for watching guys. I can't believe that I'm almost 3,000 subscribers and 100,000 views. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, uh, I doubt you're hearing this, but I appreciate it anyway.